This is the most important video I have made to the day. In it I want to talk about life choices, I want to expose the invisible hand, write down the equation that powers the working world, and stress test the theoretical axiom that if you work harder and take more risk, you earn more money. A small disclaimer, we talk about architecture and the building industry on this channel, so this video is, a, is about the AEC industry, not a general answer to the question from the title. So that being said, let's start with the hunt. I want you to reach into your quiver, uh, take out your golden bow and ask yourself if it makes sense to aim your arrows at this sweet spot right here, this upper left quadrant in the cubicle of life. And I want to explore why these two dimensions are not the only ones that matter. Now, I really wish someone had made me think about all of this like 15 years ago, but they didn't. So buckle up, we will go on this roller coaster together. If you plan to enter the world of building industry, you might wonder how stressful that can be. Or if you're already a part of the construction universe, maybe you wonder how is stress distributed between all of us and where you are on that spectrum. Well, besides the main and obvious obstacle to a stressless life, which is our own mind, Let's find out what else stands in our way to Nirvana and how to maybe actually eventually get there. At the very beginning, I'm tempted to equate time and money, but I'm afraid that will take us on a different path and we will lose the point here. So the debate of uh, time and money and how they're connected, I'll leave that for later. So on our road to happiness, let's start with this illusion called money. Now to explain this second dimension, I will equate stress with responsibility and risk. Unless you're a sociopath, which would make you ideal for a leadership position, you will have a consciousness and more importantly, a guilty conscience, and you will feel responsible for the work you took upon your shoulders. So the more risky it is what you're doing, the more responsible you will feel and the heavier the burden will be. And by risky, I mean, how bad are the consequences of your potential mistakes? Like larger consequences will lead to more stress. And I know this is simplified, but Without generalizations, we wouldn't be able to leave our bed in the morning. So let's get up, get dressed, step out of the house. Before I introduce a third dimension to this graph, I often think about how all the professions out there and how unfairly they're distributed on this planet sometimes. How some stock market speculants do not risk much but get a lot of reward putting them in this quadrant and how some soldiers who risk their lives or maybe medical workers who hold other people's lives in their hands carry a lot of responsibility on their shoulders and get much smaller rewards. But of course, if we continue down that path, we would have to expand the notion of reward because soldiers and doctors usually do not do what they do for money. So we will leave that discussion on the side and concentrate on the building industry and on the simple distribution of stress and money. And the third important factor that I want to add is ownership. Now, in my opinion, for a healthy, happy and satisfying life, we need to feel some kind of progress and accomplishment from time to time. And for that, you need a level of authority over what you're doing and producing and eventually recognition, some type of credit, appreciation. And I know there are people out there who do not care about that, but I'm going to make an assumption that for the most, this is true. And as you will see in a moment, ownership is also unfairly distributed. So now our adventure became three-dimensional as we were trying to reach this area with less stress, more money and as much ownership or recognition we can get. And just to make you understand this graph completely, imagine a famous and accomplished artist like a writer, a painter, a musician and they're at that extreme corner. They hold the complete ownership of what they made, they make a lot of money and in my definition of stress have zero of it. Because if you make a mistake, a bad chapter or a bad painting or a bad song will not have large consequences. They will just scratch that and make another one. No lives are lost, no money is lost, maybe a bit of time and a bit of pride, but that is all. Remember, in our hypothesis here, it's all about possible mistakes and responsibility. You might argue that is very specific to my view of the world, but I assure you, in large corporations, a humongous amount of time and bureaucracy is used to manage risk and mainly, mainly avoid responsibility. A huge percentage of my email correspondence when working on a large project is basically people trying to push the responsibility away from themselves. And they do that to eventually reduce stress and fear that comes with liability. Now, in this very complex attempt to simplify things, let me divide the process of creating a building into three rough phases. We have the design, 
we have the development and the construction. When the design is done, we proceed to do uh, a detailed static analysis, wind, sun calculations, all the installation planning, electrical, plumbing, develop all the tiniest details, generate the models, drawings, lists of elements, CNC files, everything needed to build the building. And we create a digital twin, uh, ideally. And then someone takes all of that to the construction site and builds it. So if we take this simple division, then we can imagine the responsibility of the consequences of a mistake looking something like this. Remember, I'm sure there are books and books written about this, books that I haven't read. But this is my generalized opinion and drawn from my own experience. Architects design and as they progress, they, they take on some risk, but that is very minimal. Then we take over and calculate and develop as we work, the risk rises. If a civil engineer miscalculates a column, the whole building might fall. Forget about the money, lives could be lost. In my team, we automate the generation of all the elements, hole, connection, screws, threads, and even though we theoretically cannot hurt anyone, our mistakes, especially on the projects we work on, can cost millions and millions of dollars. So that stress is ramping up and then as the elements start to get produced and brought to the construction site, the stress peaks. After the basic structure is there and most of the expensive and heavy skeleton of the building is done, then the risk and the responsibility slowly subside as the consequences of mistakes cost less and less as we go into the finer work and the interior details. And how about the ownership? Well, in my theory, the ownership and recognition heavily lies at the architect's side. Some of it does remain with the construction company as they get to brag about it pretty openly, so we have kind of a U-shape. However, this middle part where we are occupants holds very little to none. To be completely fair, it does depend on the project. If it is something where the structure itself is the main aspect of the building, then the engineers might get most of the credit, but that is rare. In 99% of the cases, people in these areas are unknowns and unmentionables who just get the job done. And this lack of ownership sometimes goes into the extreme. In this crazy globalized world owned by corporations and interwoven with NDAs, we have worked on some of amazing large-scale projects where we had to keep our mouth shut. Now, this is important to understand. In the last 15 years we have worked on some really amazing projects and I cannot show you almost anything we did. No detail, no parametric generation, nothing for almost any of them. And that is normal and taken as it is. Now think about it. For some projects I could literally not even mention that we have worked on it. It cannot appear on our website. And even though it might be one of the coolest projects in the world, maybe even something we are doing right this very moment, we cannot brag about it in any way. So no wonder our Instagram account is suffering. No one teaches you these things at the university, I'm sure. I know no one told me, so keep that in mind. If you're someone who needs recognition and credit, you should stay away from here. Your ego will take a fair blow. Now, there are huge differences here if you're working on a, a small or a large project. And very important distinction if you're an entrepreneur, the owner of a business, or if you're an employee. But before we address that, let's address the elephant in the room. Money. That is a tough subject. It is relatively fairly distributed according to the responsibility. Of course, if there is a famous architectural office involved, they might pull the graph, add some weight to it. But that aspect is very hard to estimate and to generalize. However, we can say that the money distribution will vary based on the size of the project and your role as an entrepreneur or an employee. So if it is a small scale project, you as an architect might cover almost everything with the help of a smaller contractor. As the projects grow, there are a lot more companies getting involved, a lot more subcontracting. The tree structure simply grows and the architects get to pull themselves, if they want of course, into this safer and more creative area. Sacrifice a little bit of money for being able to sleep at night. And for all these categories, if you're an employee instead of an owner of a business, your stress goes down because nothing is really legally your responsibility. You could always quit and walk away, but the ownership then practically disappears and the money is relatively smaller. Now, of course, I'm going to make some gross generalizations here. And for everything I say, you might immediately come up with an anecdote on an example that doesn't fit the mold. Just keep in mind that I'm giving you an opinion from personal experience of working for 15 years on large-scale projects, and an opinion that is a general overview 
of the entire situation. Mostly meant to help you find yourself on this graph here and choose the path that will lead you to where you want to go. My first advice for you is to think which of these three aspects are most important for you. If you're very young, you might say, I don't care about stress, I can handle it. And I don't care about ownership that much right now, so show me the money. That is okay, but be careful what you wish for. If you're young, you probably won't be given the responsibility anyway. So if you do not care about ownership, the path for you is to find a job in one of the large offices. If you're an architect, that would be one of the architectural offices. Some of them became real corporations nowadays with thousands of employees. And if you are an engineer or more interested in construction, there is, not, there is no lack of very large companies you can work at as well. As you rise in the company hierarchy, the money will rise, but also will the stress. If you're an employee, we can debate about what ownership means to you, but following my definition, you can say goodbye to it. I mean, if you work for a famous architectural office and you are responsible for design of some building and your name actually gets mentioned in some of the publications or in some magazine, sorry, but in my mind, that's not real ownership. We will all say Foster designed this, Jean Novel designed that, Bjarke Ingels made this, and that is how the world ticks. They get the recognition, not you. Elon Musk made Tesla, even though he didn't even found the company. He launched a rocket, etc. That's how that works. Even if you get some local recognition among small groups of people within the community, even if that is enough for you, you usually cannot legally claim anything. Bluntly speaking, you cannot officially say, I made this. So if you're very interested in the ownership, you have to become an entrepreneur. You either have to start your own architectural office or your own engineering firm, a manufacturing business or become a contractor. You know what? In order to make the advice easier, let's start from the best scenario and then walk backwards. If you want to be here, you need to have your own architectural office and that office has to be famous. And thus you get to work on large scale projects, which will get you money and fame and reduce the stress to the minimum because you will let, let the most stressful part of the process be done by others. So let's start from there and go backwards. I know that everyone thinks their job is hard and risky and responsible, but I will try to be objective here. In the entire building process, the architect bears the smallest risk because it is extremely hard to make mistakes at the beginning that won't be noticed by all the people that develop that project further along. And it is especially hard to make mistakes in the first conceptual design phase. And if you're a famous architectural office, you get to do this most creative and beautiful part of this whole process, design. And once you have developed that until a certain level of detail, then you can let different engineering firms take over, develop all the details until the very last screw and thread, every nut and bolt under your creative supervision. And then the same or other companies will manufacture, assemble and build all that. So you as a famous architect are involved uh, all the time in making sure they're doing the right job, but have very little or none of the responsibility. And at the same time, you are keeping all of the ownership. We will all equate the building with your name. You will have the pictures of it on your website and in all of the online and offline magazines. It will say the building designed by big Hephaestus. That's the name I gave you for now, so stick with it. So no one will mention the engineers, contractors, workers, and so on and so on. So now that we know who lives there, let us first remember that if you work for an office like that as an employee, you will feel less stress, make good money, but you will have to denounce the ownership. And I know that young architects, especially in offices like that, work 12 hours a day, work weekends, feel they're very stressed, but that is more of a personal issue. And that has a lot of other causes that I will not talk about here. One of them being that architects do not know when to stop designing. They keep designing even after the concrete is being poured on the site, thus breaking all the deadlines and creating stress where there should be none. And then there is the desire to work for a star architect that makes people choose the worst of both worlds, have the stress of an entrepreneur and no ownership at the same time. But as I said, let's leave that for another day and let's stay at the generalization I made that stress mostly comes from the risk and responsibility and not because you're afraid of your boss and accept to work 100 hour weeks for no money. That is your fault. How about what if you're an architect but not famous? Well, then you can keep the ownership, but the money will go down and the stress might come from the responsibility if you decide to take a larger chunk of work on your shoulders. Or if you want to just design, then the stress will come from actually finding the work. Everyone wants to design. That's why they studied architecture. But the truth is that only a very small number of people gets to do it. 
in this globalized world, in every industry, 99% of work goes to the top 1%. So the largest stress will come from not knowing if the next project will come or not. Too hard to generalize here, but you get the point. Now let's jump to the other side, construction. These companies have a lot of responsibility and some ownership. Yes, in the magazines people mostly mention the architect, but they get to say, hey, we built this. However, the construction site is unpredictable and there are a lot of risks. Human errors can cost lives or millions of dollars and these companies have to be very well insured. If they are big and know how to negotiate, they will find themselves somewhere around the middle of the graph, gravitating toward higher stress and higher money and some decent ownership. If they are working on small projects or certain type of objects, the money and the stress might go down a bit and the ownership can actually go up. When I say a certain type for classical apartment buildings in your neighborhood, you know those pinnacles of 21st century architecture? Boxes. For them, you probably do not know who the architects are, but probably very well know the company building them since their signs are all around the construction site. That is what I mean when I say the ownership can rise for the certain type of objects. And now we come to the middle of the project, something I know the best because that is what we do most of the time. Together with different engineers, we do static analysis and development of all the details and production ready models and drawings so that they can go straight to the machine and to the construction site. And if you're interested in landing here, then listen to me very carefully because I really wish someone told me all of this 15 years ago. In this area, you forfeit the ownership for the money. Money is relatively good and it depends on the scale of the project, but there is very, very little ownership. Different companies know how to position themselves or choose projects where their expertise is the most important, of course, but at the end of the day, if you're here, you're never leading the game. You're always subcontracted in a way, either from the architect side or from the general contractor side who will try to build the building. I can now go on and on and on about the details and different types of projects, but that would be probably boring for most of you and beside the advice I'm trying to give you. So let's try to sum it up. As usual, I will start with the metaphor. I talked about writers, musicians, artists. Let's expand that metaphor with professional sportsmen and women. The higher you shoot, the smaller the chances are that you're going to get there. If you get there, you get all the recognition, money and ownership, but for everyone that does get there, there are millions of others who do not and no one ever talks about them. So if you're okay with those chances, my advice is that you start your own company and move toward the design phase of the project. You can start a construction company as well if that's what you like, but be prepared for sleepless nights even if you actually make it. If you want to aim at the middle phase of the project where I live, you can count on very challenging and interesting tasks. This is where the engineering shows its best colors and you can be proud of yourself for making some crazy design uh, actually buildable, but only do that if you leave the desire for recognition at the door. In your Instagram and TikTok account, you can post 10 selfies a day if you want, but you will not be able to show much of what you do. You know how interior designers have all those cool Instagram accounts with millions of followers? Their projects are relatively small and don't take a long time to finish, so there's a lot of them and they have complete ownership and can post 10 pictures a day if they want and have sort of a pride when they look at their collection. And this is not a feeling that you should underestimate. Most of the video games are based on the nurture of that feeling of progress ownership, collection. You build your own castle, your own village, a city or even a civilization. You progress, you expand, you improve it step by step. You enlarge your portfolio in a way, in a visual, obvious way. If you're a 3D artist like Beeple, every model you make like his dailies is yours, a part of your collection. And you get to show your collection to the world and say, look, this is what I have done. Basically, none of that here. And that is what I wish someone has told me, because for me that collection is important. I used to play Sid Meier's Civilization a lot when I was young and in one part, I think Civ 3, every now and then the game would offer you to improve on your palace, add a wall, a table, and I love that part because of what I just, just described. Progress. As everyone who studies architecture, I too desire to be there, but I was always too afraid to take that shot. So I am trying to solve that problem of ownership the best way that I can, and I have many ways I'm devising to do that. On this channel I cannot talk about concrete projects, but I get to teach, generalize, make courses and so on and on. I'm trying to accept that stress and responsibility are not only negative and they can strengthen your character, make you proud, trying to practice extreme ownership as Jocko Willink would phrase it, and acknowledge that experience we are getting in return is also very 
valuable. But I need you to know all of this because when you make your choices, it can make a huge difference in your life. If you're an up and comer, you will take a lot of risk for little money, including the risk of not earning money. But choose what you want from the start. When I watched Good Will Hunting for the first time, that constant repeating question that Robin uh, Williams' character asks, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? It irritated me a bit then. I thought, come on, that is not a realistic question. We all know what we want. That's never the problem. The older I get, the more I am amazed at how important that question is and how Matt Damon and Ben Affleck realized that so young when they were writing the script. Think about what you want. That is extremely important, if not the most important question. Think hard, think well, and then go for it. Stay free.